Well, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. I am pastoral intern Colin Newharth, and welcome to Studying God's Word. Um, just a uh, minor note here. Uh, this will be my final uh, Studying God's Word as the pastoral intern at Trinity Lutheran. And so over the summer here, I will be transitioning over to uh, becoming the pastor at St. Luke's Lutheran in Wishick, North Dakota. And once I am into that role a little bit, uh, we'll start back up again uh, mid-August or so with our weekly uh, Studying God's Word, which will be a ministry that will be uh, together uh with Trinity Lutheran and St. Luke's Lutheran. So that's very exciting. That's what's coming up. And when we come back, uh, we will be doing something a little different. We won't necessarily be doing the weekly readings. We won't be studying the weekly readings per se. But I want to take a direction of, advent we'll call it Adventures in the Bible. Um, really... Breaking apart those familiar Bible stories that we know in the Old and New Testament and um, discovering other stories that we may not have as many details to. So that's what will be coming up here. Uh, so to give you a little taste of that, today we are going to look at the book of Jonah in in the Old Testament today. Um, and Jonah is what's known as one of the minor prophets. So one of the, the many uh, other books of the Old Testament, so to speak. Not, not any of the first five or the Psalms or Isaiah. Um, but those other prophets that are listed in there. And if you have some time, Jonah is a pretty short book. Um, only four chapters. You could probably get it done in, 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 you could definitely get it done in one sitting. It's a very brief story, but there's a lot to it. Um, so what we'll do first here is we'll kind of go through um, these, uh, what, what the point of Jonah is, what the background is. All right, so the book of Jonah, it's a satire in a way. It's kind of a comedy satire, so it's helpful to approach it in that way. Did, did he really get swallowed up by a big fish? Maybe. We don't know for sure. But the idea behind it is this literary satire to uh, give you this extreme <laughs> to show you the power of God working through other people and the power of God calling us to different things that uh, we may not want to do or we may think God is crazy for calling us to do these certain things and so um, this is a um, a remarkable story of a prophet who is called by God to prophesy to um, to Nineveh to, so um, to call out their evil ways. So we are so let's start at the beginning here. Um, we'll go through the familiar parts and some of the n maybe not so familiar parts are the things that we overlook a little bit. So in chapter one, this is where God calls Jonah to go to Nineveh. 
And we got to remember, the Ninevites were an evil community. They were very violent. They were very warlike. They turned away from God. Um, so God uh, calls calls Jonah and he says go at once to Nineveh that great city and cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me so God is saying Jonah go tell Nineveh how wicked they've been uh, but Jonah is like uh, no <laughs> so Jonah set out to flee to a land called Tarshish uh, from the presence of the Lord so he hid on this ship um, and so as Jonah was hiding on this ship, uh, God sent a huge storm to almost overtake the ship. Um, and the captain comes over to Jonah who is sleeping and he says, what are you doing? Sound asleep. Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. So the sailors um, the sailors obviously see that something is up and it has something to do with Jonah and so the sailors they cast lots um, and so uh, to see whose fault it was and it just so happened the lots were cast on Jonah and then they said to him tell us why this calamity has come upon us what is your occupation where do you come from because these sailors don't know anything about jonah and so he said i am a hebrew i worship the lord the god of the heaven who made the sea and the dry land uh and then the these men were even more afraid because they weren't hebrew um <laughs> And then they blame him. They're like, what is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord. And so, uh, and so then these, these men on the ship were like, what, what should we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? And so Jonah says to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. That is where he, Jonah, is kind of confessing <laughs> what's going on. He's basically saying, um, I'm hiding out from God and... So just throw me overboard. Everything will be fine for you. Still won't be great for me, but it'll be fine for you. So they hurled him over the ship. And God doesn't stop there with Jonah. Jonah's still trying to run away from God. And a large, it says, but the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Okay, so recap. Jonah on ship, um, the uh, sailors uh, are in the midst of this huge storm that God put on them. Jonah admits that it was his fault because he's hiding from God and he's thrown off the ship and a large fish swallows him. Now, uh, many of us in our childhood stories, we think of Jonah being swallowed up by a whale Scripture isn't that specific about it. Like, it doesn't say actual whale. It says large fish. So who knows what happened? But the, the point of this is this is a satire that uses hyperbole, that uses different literary functions to just show the power of God and how powerful God's call is for everybody. Um, so that's chapter 1. Chapter 2 goes into, it's a psalm of thanksgiving. Um, so this is where Jonah's still in the belly of the whale. And um, Jonah's like, okay, God, um, I'm in distress here. I thank you for calling me. You cast me into the deep. This are, these are the things you've done to me. I get it. I hear you. Um and 
deliverance belongs to the Lord is how he en he ends this prayer. And then in verse 10 of chapter 2, it says, Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. Okay, so um, God sees that Jonah is back on board here with the plan. And so we go into chapter 3. Now Jonah uh, comes up to Nineveh. Uh, or God calls Jonah one more time and says, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to, to it the message that I tell you. And so this time Jonah actually pays attention. He sets out to Nineveh um, according to the word of the Lord. Now, um, this is an ex uh, a large city. It takes three days to walk across the entire city if that gives you any idea. Um, Jonah began to go into the city, uh, going a day's walk. So he's probably about a third of the way into the city, roughly. And then he cries out. He says, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And what happens? So so he's, uh, he's expecting to be the one run out of the city because these people are just nasty. They are not great people. And so, uh, but what happens is all of a sudden the people of Nineveh believed in God, the Lord God, not any of their pagan gods, but the Lord God. And they proclaimed a fast and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. They did all these rituals to appease God um, by the decree of the king and his nobles no human being or animal no herd or flock shall taste anything they shall not feed nor shall they drink water human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth and they shall cry mightily to God so the people of Nineveh have suddenly recognized their evil ways okay and so uh, God at the end of it, God changed God's mind and said, and said, no, I'm not going to destroy you because you've obviously changed your ways. Why would I? That's the end of chapter three. Now, moving into chapter four, Jonah gets angry at God. It was very displeasing to Jonah and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and he said, Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. So, so Jonah goes on this tirade. He's like, look, the reason I ran the other way was because I knew you would do this anyway because I believe you are a God of, of, of goodness and mercy and and that you love god's people that you will not do it do a calamity upon god's people even the ones as evil as nineveh and so and so jonah kind of gets really dramatic here um because of this whole ironic situation so he gets really dramatic here um, and he says, Lord, please take my life from me for it is better for me to die than to live. And so that's where the, where God responds and says, is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city, sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. And he sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what, what would become of the city. So Jonah's still kind of skeptical of, of God keeping that whole promise he's like well god sent me to do this something better happened and so he um he he kind of sits himself down kind of in the shade outside of the city and is kind of expecting a show in a way um and so the lord god appointed a bush and made it come up over jonah give it shade over his head to save him from the discomfort and Jonah was happy about this, but then dawn came up the next day. God made a worm that attacked the bush, and the bush withered. So 
So God took the bush away. Um, when the sun rose, God prepared an easterly wind. And the sun beat down on Jonah, and he wasn't feeling good. But Jonah still said, Jonah's a stubborn one here. He said, it is still better for me to die than to live. I'm still mad at you, God. So, getting towards the end of the story here, God says to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? God is basically saying... Um, don't, uh, God, God is saying that I gave that bush to you and I took it away, but you did not create it. You don't need to be concerned about it. Same with the Ninevite people. I am the one who created those people. I am the one who cares about them. It is God who cares for God's people always. And our job is to fulfill God's call. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little mini adventure through the book of Jonah. And like I said, when we come back later in August, uh, we'll be doing more of the same about... This one was a little longer today, but usually around 15 minutes worth of Bible adventures. So uh, grace and peace to all of you, and you have a wonderful week and a wonderful summer. God bless.